Tung da ga dang da ga dung da ra tung da ra dung 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 Tung da ga dang tam tung da ra dang tung di di ding ding tung tung da ga ding dang da ga da ga dung tung da ga ding dang da ga da ga dung tung da ga ding dang da ga dang 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 da ga da ga dung dang da ga dang dang da ga da ga dung da ga da ga brang. Hello everyone and welcome to this conversation on navigating systems of care and control. So this is the fifth episode of the Lumbung Context series, which is a, a series of online conversations that are leading up to the June exhibition of Documenta 15, which is under the artistic direction of Ruan Grupa, who are a Jakarta-based artist collective. So in case you didn't know, I didn't, um, Lumbung is a practice of of Ruan Grupa, it's actually a method, I think, a methodology. And translated from the Indonesian, it means rice barn. So in Indonesian rural communities, the surplus harvest is stored in this communal um, system of rice barns and they're distributed for the benefit of the community. So right there in the method that is convening us today are these different themes of hospitality and care that I think are central to Documenta 15 in these conversations. So my name is Yasmin Gunaratnam. I'm a social scientist at the School of Education, Community and Society at King's College London. And I've been doing research for several years um, using creative methods. And I've been really interested in the intersections between diasporic disability, dying and end of life care and these are situations in which body minds are at their limits and hospitality and care must be constantly remade and renewed. Um, so I'll be moderating the dialogue this afternoon between practitioners at Trampoline House in Denmark and those from Project Artworks in the UK. And the purpose of these conversations is really to share and to listen and to learn but also to expand and challenge how we might think about the ethical and the political tightrope that bridges the meeting points between care and control, and not only at the level of the state, but also within the most intimate levels of our relationships in working towards and perhaps rehearsing more radical communities of care and hospitality that are convened by art. Um, and before the panel introduce themselves, I have some practical information. So you can post questions in the YouTube chat, which we can hopefully pick up and address at the end of the conversation. And if you want to watch this conversation in German, there's currently another live stream on the Documenta 15 U page, um, YouTube page. So there's options there in terms of how you might want to participate in this discussion. So I'm going to hand over now um, first to the panelists from Trampoline House. They'll introduce themselves individually and just say something about their role within the project. So um, Morton, if we could hear from you. Um, yes, <laughs> hello. Um, so, um, my name is Morten and uh, I'm uh, presently the uh, uh, general manager of uh, the Weekend Trampoline House and I was also um, involved in the uh, very beginning when we started up Trampoline House uh, in 2009. Um, so, uh, I'm like uh, one of the veterans. Okay, thank you. Carlotta? Yes, hey, hello, honey. thank you for the intro, uh, Yasmin. So my name is Carlotta Mia, I'm an independent curator and researcher based in Vienna, yeah, but previously Scandinavia as well. It, it, and I've been involved with Trampoline House for about three years, uh, both like outside and inside of the Documenta 15 context. Um, 
I would say that some of the things that I've been involved with the most together with Sara Haldirani are um, fundraising, um, advocacy and mediation work. And as part of Documenta 15, we're also both working with uh, Lumbung partnering and also sustaining local partners, partnerships in, in Castle, as well as the art installation and education um, groups. Thank you. And Sarah? Yeah, thank you for this space. I'm Sarah Alberani, I'm based in Rome, but uh, I'm an independent curator, uh, especially focused on socially engaged art practices, uh, which build relationships and spaces together with marginalized communities that are lacking an equal access to the public sphere, such as asylum seekers, refugees, and communities affected by uh, diasporic phenomena. So I met Trampoline House for this uh, research in uh, 2019, and then together with Carlotta, we were advocating for the Visible Award. We will see the video later about that. And uh, Advocate for Trampoline House, it, it has been uh, um, a very intense experience because I can really compare and understand and exchange knowledge about asylum system all over Europe and what uh, is the asylum system in Denmark and what it is in Italy, for example. So for me, it was so important to exchange translocally our methodology and then also uh, to help the house for fundraising because sustainability, we will see later, is a big chapter for the house as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, very significantly, we have an absent presence, which you'll see in the terms of the blue square on the screen. Um, and this is Shakira. So I wondered, um, Carlotta, can you just say something about Shakira and her work at Trampoline House? Yes. Um, yes. First of all, um, apologies that she cannot be here. So um, Shakira Mukamusoni, she is an activist that has been working for several years inside of the Trampoline House community. And I would say like she's a vital um, person for the organization. She's originally from, from Congo and she has experienced, I would say the worst of the Danish asylum system and it's uh, violence um, for a number of years. And uh, the reason she's not here today is that she has been involved in doing um, important research for our Documenta 15 project in the camps in Armstrong, in con concretely. And uh, the connection is really, really bad there. So sadly, even though we've really tried our best to have her uh, with us, it just has not been possible. And we think it's important to show this absence because it's uh, really also part of our presence in Documenta 15. Uh, people cannot travel, they cannot um, access reliable connection, and they they are faced with a really sort of uh, dire lack of material, uh, really horrible material conditions. So we thought it was important to to leave her presence there, even, even though it's a presence absence. Thank you. Um, and we'll now go to Project Artworks, who are based in the south of the UK, and they're going to be sharing one screen. Um, so perhaps, Kate, we could start with you and then you can each of, each of you who's on the screen can introduce yourselves. Sure. So I'm Kate Adams and um, I'm an artist and co-founder of Project Artworks. I am the mother of a a uh, man who's 39 now with uh, quite complex uh, support needs um, and he prompted me to find a way to uh, combine art life and care in work and um, artworks has evolved over the last project artworks has evolved over the last 20 years and we'll we'll be talking quite a lot more about that in a in a little while but we're here in our studio and um <laughs> this is uh i'm mel sexton um carl is my brother and he uh, he comes to project artworks on a friday uh as we take you yeah why don't you take us for a walk Kate? 
Yeah, you can see in the background Carl's work. Can you say hi? Oh, hello, Carl. This is Carl. Hi, hey, Carl. <laughs> it's really difficult to move this, yeah. Yeah, uh, we can get a really good sense of the space. Hi, uh, Hi Janine. This is Janine. Nice to see you, everyone. <laughs> so we're not just his siblings, though. We are also, uh, well, part of him, well, we do his carers, essentially, to assist with his complex needs that he has. Communication is a big issue, so and that's why we're here today, to be part of the conversation. <laughs> So, uh, I'm Tim Corrigan, I'm um, Creative Director of Project Artworks, um, I'm a filmmaker and yeah, I've been uh, working with Project Artworks since uh, uh, the early days, and, uh, starting very much in the, in the studios, facilitating and collaborating with um, lots of different people. Okay, thank you. Um, we thought just in terms of how the conversation would develop that it would be really good for the different projects to, sh to show you something of what they do and the context in which they're working. Um, so if we could go to the trampoline house film, we're just going to show you five minutes of what, what's a, a, about a 10 minute film. Um, and this is for, was for the Visible Awards, which Carlotta and Sarah mentioned. So if we could show that film, that would be great now. Tremblin House started as a socially engaged art project in 2010. And over the years, we have grown into a permanent NGO. We describe ourselves as a refugee justice community center. Well, the problem right now is that the politicians are deliberately uh, attempting to make life as impossible uh, as they can for people who live in the asylum system. We can not do anything. We have no rights. We have no amenities. School. We have no job. I don't know what's happening to me in the next week or next month. I'm always waiting for answer. The Trump in house. It's a way to take action, to propose that there is a different way. Trampoline House is not helping people. Uh, we try to give people the tools and knowledge and information so they can help themselves in this vulnerable situation that they're in. We do that by offering job training and internships, legal counseling, medical counseling, psychological counseling, language classes, workshops, art exhibitions, democratic fora, community dinners, uh, socializing. As a part of Trampoline House, we opened four years ago, Camp Center for Art and Migration Politics, where we focus on issues of displacement, migration, immigration and asylum and work with both internationally acclaimed artists and young and upcoming artists who most of them themselves have uh, experiences of, of uh, becoming a refugee or migrant and being racialized. Uh, I was invited to make an exhibition here, call it uh, William. It's a, it's a privilege because of, uh, you, you have a, um, the chance to show your concepts and to uh, work in a multidisciplinary team. I think the house is important because it encompasses a lot of aspects of life uh, that every human needs, regardless of who they are. If you want to uh, promote democracy, you have to deprogram yourself. You have to get to a point where you can meet on equal terms. That's not easy because the inequality between the asylum system and a general citizen in Denmark is immense. But this house is creating a social frame where it is possible to feel equality and then democracy is possible. Here in Trampoline House everybody accepts us with the heart. I feel free. 
I love it because if I'm coming, I feel it good. So far as you step for this house, we are family. I'll see my brothers, I'll see my sisters, black and white and chocolate and <laughs> different colors. <laughs> Every day, uh, the house is a testimony to the fact that the coexistence and integration are not these difficult, impossible processes that policymakers want us to believe. We prove on a daily basis that uh, we can share a space and feel love for a space despite our differences. Altså, der er slet ikke nogen tvivl om, at trampolinhuset har en kæmpe stor betydning og har haft en stor betydning for de mennesker, som kommer i huset. Men trampolinhuset har også haft mere overordnet betydning for vores samfund ved at møde asylansøgerne, ved at møde flygtningene som ligeværdige borgere i sådan et demokratisk møde. Og, og jeg håber meget, og jeg synes også, jeg oplever det, at det etablerede system er blevet inspireret af den ligeværdighed, som er fundamentet for trampolinhuset. If we receive the visible award, we would like to apply the money uh, towards our special program for children. Children are especially vulnerable within the Danish asylum system and we run special programs and, and uh, educational classes for the kids. Thank you. I wonder what what sort of um, came across in the last moments of that film was also the slow, quiet violence of migration, the immigration system in Denmark. And Carlotta and perhaps Sarah, who were really involved in the film, would you like to just say more about the context to, to give some of that broader context to this film? Carlotta, do you want to go first? Sure. I mean, I can uh, help introduce the the topic, but also like Morten is uh, the expert here. Um, I can just say that the Danish asylum system, contrary to what people may think of when they think of Denmark as a Scandinavia democratic society and a model society, perhaps even it's it's really one of the most violent in the world, um, and it's um, kind of based on normalized hostility, criminalization and dehumanization of uh, asylum seekers and, and migrants. Um, like we've seen in the, in the video, like uh, there are no resources allocated to asylum seekers needs. They um, experience what um, theorist Nicholas Misoev, who was a collaborator with us at a camp, um, described as the social death. So really like government policies are aimed at um, shutting out any possibility for social life, for a, a, a life worth living in the end with the ultimate aim of deterring these people from actually um, obtaining asylum. And I think that's important. It's a deliberate choice. Okay, thank you. Um, Sarah and then Morton. Sarah, would you like to say something about that film? And Yes. Um, what really we can take <coughs> from the video is one sentence of Morton that is uh, make life as impossible as they can, the politicians. Uh, so it, it was also a great debate, a public debate, speaking about killing them softly. Uh, what does it mean? It means that low standard of the centers that are uh, deportation camps, uh, the peripheral location, so totally outside the city, the uh, invisibilization of their bodies and also the lack of an economic support are all the structure that makes uh, residents uh, and 
asylum seekers leave Denmark voluntary. Uh, it makes uh, this promoting also Denmark uh, now in this very moment extraterritorial detention camps outside from Europe. And this is totally against human rights law. And also um, there is what also Shakira that now she's missing define the chain. What does it mean? Uh, this chain is what uh, we we assist inside the Denmark uh, uh, context uh, is uh, totally make uh, people impossible to react. So this is why it is so important to tell about this violent condition, but moreover, the, the actions that uh, we are trying to organize every day in order to face it. This is uh, also what Champlain House is acting as an un antidote to uh, these very conditions. Thank you, Sarah. And Morton? All right. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add, uh, because uh, it's true uh, what uh, uh, Kalotja and Sarah are uh, talking about, but there are some uh, details which are important. Uh, for instance, um, it's not quite true that there's no money allocated for asylum seekers. Actually, we have a quite expensive system, but the problem is that it is used to uh, isolate people. Uh, so uh, you, uh, people are being put in these camps and are being victimized. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, they starve or have no roof over their heads. On, on the contrary, uh, the, body, the bodies are taken care of. There's also a healthcare system, although uh, uh, based on uh, like uh, it's like lower quality healthcare in comparison with the Danish system, but still uh, the system respects uh, the human body, but it doesn't respect uh, the uh, individual as a as a citizen or anything like that. Um, and that's really what uh, when when the house is an antidote uh, is because. Uh, we um, offer people to become part of the community, which uh, they have no way of being part of um, in other ways. Okay, thank you. So there are some important themes that came, came up there in terms of those relationships between care and control. But there was something about the dispersed, slow violence of the asylum system in Denmark that felt feels really important in terms of thinking about what an antidote might be to that. Um, and also these differences, the huge distances between the image and then the reality. And perhaps just holding those themes in mind. And Morton also mentioned this double think around how people are addressed as bodies and not recognized as people with bodily needs as well. So there's this, this tension that's going on. So holding those in mind, I wondered if we could move on to project artworks, who are also going to show you something of their work and will then contextualize it in this short film. And this is the one actually that's a longer film. So we're going to see the first five minutes of it. So if we could show um, the Project Artworks film now, please.
Yes. Yes, I am. I am. Great. They've got the hair, they kind of like, they look. No, oh, let's pull up. Hello, Kate. Did you see some jewellery? Yeah. I very much see. How's Paul? He's good, thanks. Yeah, he's um, very good. good this week. He wasn't so happy last week. Why was he so happy last week? I think it's because there was a full moon. Thank you. Um, so project artworks, oh. just tell us something, tell us something about the context um, that's important in really understanding your work and what was showed in that film. Well, um, first of all, we um, use art in order to be able to enable people to be visible and to um, be creative on their own terms in ways that completely um, resonate with their innate ability and uh, ways of interacting with the world. But also the context at the moment is that, for example, in the last two years, two thirds of the people who have died in the UK through the pandemic no! are, are disabled and people requiring support in all areas of their lives. So there's a profound inequity in society between neurodivergent and non-neurodivergent communities or disabled and non-disabled communities. So it's very, very important to create a platform of visibility that is um, recognizable as a place of value. And in this, in our society, culture is valued. Um, 
So I guess it's a, a way of creating visibility that is uh, very much, whilst it is very much on the terms of the people making the work, it also is something recognisable for public audiences. Um, Tim. Speaking, yeah, um, so the film you just saw was um, shot within uh, one of the workshop days that are run here. We, we run a creative programme for neurodivergent artists, but really, um, you can, in the background, you can hear Carl, who's, who's actually in the film, uh, doing the lovely uh, dots on the wall. Uh, and he's here as well now, making some work. Um, and so nearly all the work actually starts with these kind of uh, deep trust-based relationships with individuals and within the environment of the studio. And uh, with people, the connections that are made within the studio uh, then sort of radiate out into the wider areas of people's lives. So, yeah, so I don't know if now we would like to speak a little bit about Carl and his work with Bridget Alba. Uh, well, the work Carl produces, I feel like, is a, a great extension of what he can express as he's non verbal. Uh, throughout his 24 hours like that like, and it's developed and changed over the years as well i've been here for about seven eight years that's a fair amount of time and although his practice has changed it's still very much it, you can tell it's carl's work so i think yeah it's been a massive benefit uh, being a part of project artworks for him it's had, it, despite it it's not exactly a uh it's not something that is we had to i think it was we, was we sort it out sort somewhere like here out because there's not many places that are available for carl to to be at so it was nice to have to be a part of something where he was accepted completely and fully as he as he was and as you can see in the film he's just it's just himself <laughs> thank you um, I wonder, just coming back to this larger conversation, so again, there are really important themes in there. So, certain legibility that comes when you channel different lives through art, um, but also that being really important that that art is on the ter own terms, the people creating it, which again is quite a difficult balance, I think, to 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 hold and something we might come back to later in terms of how you occupy or invade dominant cultural spaces. Um, there was also um, something that Tim mentioned about deep trust. And that feels in terms of the context in which you're working, where you're having to work with uncertainty and the unknown, really important as well. Um, as an as a imperative, I guess, that you're working towards. And particularly, Mel, you talked about the nonverbal. And I think, again, that's really important in terms of how we think about the contemporary um, conditions of citizenship, you know, so I think you're working in different domains of what I would think of as intimate citizenship. So how do people how do we honour people's different forms of agency within a wider system that can be dehumanising? Um, and to the extent that Kate mentioned with the very real, it's almost an e eugenics, I, I use that term very, um, you know, very carefully in terms of what's happened during the pandemics as a, during the pandemic as another form of violence. Um, before we open up this conversation, and I'd really like to encourage you to talk to each other as well. Um, we've just had a message that um, Mohanad is not going to be able to join us. So I wondered if somebody from Trampoline House would like to introduce him as well and his role within Trampoline House. Morton. Uh, yes, I will. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, I just got a message from Mohanad that um, he will not be able to make it this time. Um, and uh, so, uh, we should introduce him anyway. Uh, he was supposed to be here. Um, Mohanad is from uh, Syria and has been in Trampenhaus since 2019. He came uh, 
uh, uh, on the run as a uh, filmmaker uh, who had been uh, doing uh, documentaries about the uh, the civil war. And oh, here he is. <laughs> That's amazing. I was just introducing you. <laughs> so uh, perhaps we can give him a, a moment to settle in. Nope. Hi, Mohanad. Yeah. Hello. I'm Wana. Welcome. Hi. Um, okay. You might want to catch your breath, but we were, um, Morton was just introducing you and saying something about your role and work within Trampoline House. So are you, are you ready to say something or would you like a few minutes to gather uh, yourself? Just a few minutes because I was just stopped by the police, so it would be just nice to, you know, easily. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That feels really uh, important again to recognize. So let's uh, let's give you a few moments to gather yourself yeah, after something yeah. like that. Mm. <sighs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, I, uh, um, apparently the, the people of the Asmos Pelagon group downstairs and somebody has thrown something at them. So now they are stopping every brown person by passing by. So oh. so that was a lovely twenty minutes. Uh, but uh, yeah, my name is Mohanad, and I uh, uh, yeah I'm from Syria, uh, and I've been living in Denmark for almost three years now, and I've been involved in Trampoline House since like pretty fairly like uh, fairly close to the time I I arrived. Like I spent just a couple of months in Denmark before I I I was told about this place, and uh, yeah, I've been a part of the community since uh, mid 2019 i guess uh yeah thank you and uh yeah i'm a, I'm, a, I'm a filmmaker so my background is in uh, in creating film and visual media and uh i've been invited uh to be a part of the documenta group i thought this was more than sorry uh of the documenta group uh that's participate or like trampoline house group that's participating in the documenta exhibition uh, I was invited by Tuna and Morton, and uh, I have been uh, trying to uh, participate in my experiences as a as someone who creates visual content that is very related to migration and political activities in general, but also as a visual artist, uh, in order to uh, create our participation and our installation in uh, in Documenta as a, as a as a community, and. Uh, yeah, I like as as you might already know. Like we are divided into workshops in terms of our participation in the in the exhibition, and right now I'm responsible for two workshops. One of them is about filmmaking, which uh, I'm intending to launch very soon, uh, and would, w which would have uh, two parts. One is educational, uh, to teach people of migrant backgrounds and everyone else how to tell their own stories and uh, visually and uh, the other workshop um and the other part of the workshop is about documenting our activities and our journey in the house to participate in uh, in in documenta and to create visual content that will be exhibited or showcased in 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 the in the in the exhibition itself and the next the second workshop i'm responsible for is uh, is a comedy workshop uh, we call it political incorrectness and uh, it stands on the ground of trying to uh, analyze and critic, uh, criticize uh, all the circumstances that we and all the conditions that we go through as refugees and as uh, immigrants uh, in the West, uh, but in a in a comic way where there are no filters, uh, and uh, it's li like th th this concept is based on. Uh, on, on a, a segment of the Arabic literature where we, uh, where when we write comedy, we say we want to tell the story without makeup, and uh, and that's where political incorrectness comes from. In order to like you know tell everything without filters and just be brutally honest and sarcastic about it. So yeah, that's a little bit about me and my participation in the exhibition. Thank you. Thank you. I wonder if we could just open up again to this dialogue and. And both of you, um, in terms of the partners in, in this dialogue, have given us some hints and suggestions about the broader ideas that inform your work. And I wonder if we could just return to those now. So 
trampoline house you mentioned the chain mm -hmm. um, but there might be other broader orienting concepts that you're working with um and kate and uh tim and the sexton family this i'd really love to come back to this issue of deep trust as well and really what that feels like and perhaps how do you know when it's there so um project artworks let's start with you and give Mohanad as well a time to just have some water and, and recuperate so just can you tell us something about those broader ideas that inform your work yeah i mean um i think the the difficulties for people in um uh, the practical solutions to living um, and um, receiving the support that they need are very central to the work. Um, we, we operate in a, a system where we do have um, systemic structures that um, can provide support, but they tend to be very adversarial. So for someone who needs support in all areas of their life, uh, they aren't actually innately vulnerable in themselves. They're, they're made vulnerable by adversarial systems, uh, which tend to be discretionary, especially um, as adults. Um, and so the art in the studios uh, creates a, uh, it has no boundaries. It, is a, it operates on the basis of uh, fixing environments and not people. So the environment we create enables freedom, which then enables uh, a person to flower and to be free um, and to uh, respond and to lead uh, the development of a practice, uh, whatever that might be. That then creates a real sense of value and agency for the individual, which then radiates, radiates out to um, the family. And I think that that's when they have uh, families, close families, I think that's a really important aspect because it repositions someone as not an object of need and of risk and of assessment and of services and of public funds, but as uh, an extremely vital creative uh, force. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd just add to that, thinking about the, the, the trust. And this. I think that, um, you know, we, we, we develop relationships over a long period of time. It's, it's, it's the first thing is that we give this time and um, a lot of the people that uh, collaborate with us and we've been lucky enough to work with our studio base here in Hastings, we work with for, as Mel was saying about Carl, you know, actually we worked with Carl when he was actually really small um, at, uh, at his primary school. But So we develop these relationships, so we give them time and that's really obviously really important in order to really get to know people and for people to get to know us. And, and I think like creating the environments uh, that people be free in where we where they're, they're highly personalized uh, for each individual and it's it's that sort of it's the reversal of the sort of typical power dynamic actually associated with relationships uh with people who have complex support needs it's the is, is what actually uh builds the trust and actually we are very much um we operate the studios are operating a very sort of non-hierarchical way and actually we always feel that the learn you know that it's a mutual learning and giving experience and so it's never something that we feel like we're giving to someone we always feel like we're kind of you know we're recipient, recipients uh, as much as as we give and so it's that it's, a, it's that kind of the balance of that relationship that actually builds it's really uh, which builds trust and and actually then all that that's the work that then we can take into the wider collaborations that we do externally but it all sort of it all sort of generated from the nucleus of the, the studio and, the, and these relationships thank you i mean i'd like to maybe hear a bit more about that 
work that you do in terms of sort of art and the care reversing traditional sort of power dynamics but perhaps because there's sometimes a tendency to gloss over these things what about things that you've learned from so you're saying it's a constant learning process but perhaps where you've really been challenged and something that's been quite normalized suddenly comes into appearance so maybe what's taken for granted shakes a bit um well i think that there's this idea that society and culture here are open and um liberal and accessible but there there one of the things for us is um how invisible people are um in communities in civic and community life in leadership in um, programs of culture and exhibition and the challenges we try what we try very gently to challenge these things gently because there's a lot of fear uh, in society I think about difference um, and it has uh, we're making progress I think over the the situations we've always responded to the external context and monitored that as we go and need to keep an eye on political and social contexts um, and allow them to inform actions um, but there has been a lot of resistance um, you know trying to find um, the balance and uh, exposure and representation for people in cultural settings has been very hard. Um, I think it's, uh, we're just seeing the sort of doors slightly open, but there has been huge resistance that's been at times very overt on fundamental uh, levels of prejudice and discrimination. I don't know if that answers your question, Yasmin. I mean, maybe we can come back to that in terms of thinking about your individual practices as well and you being challenged, I guess. So, um, but mm. let's, let's come back to that. Um, so to go over to Trampoline House, uh, I'd like to pick up from what Kate's been talking about in terms of the resistance as well, that this Kate's and Project Artworks, um, their, their care that they're trying to enable within, within their project. And to come back to this notion also that you mentioned about the chain, and perhaps what I heard from that was this concatenation of systems which combine together to produce a certain form of dehumanization. Um, and yeah, if you could just talk about those bigger ideas really in terms of your work. So who would like to respond to that? Carlotta. I would like to start, but then I would like to really open it up to everyone because I think it's uh, really the central vertebrating notion and also one of the reasons why I resonate. So I think, um, We've already touched upon some of these topics. I mean, I think it was absolutely essential what Morton just said about um, how, and that was perhaps my wrong uh, wording as well, how the asylum system cares for sort of maintaining the bodies of people in the asylum system and obviously puts economic resources towards that. But that doesn't mean that there is a, an intention to, um, to offer any sort of fruitful life. So there is a... a really significant disregard for life understood as uh, access into the public realm as quality of life etc um so why am i pointing this out because i think that there's been such an overuse actually of the term care recently especially in the art world in cultural contexts etc but i think it's really important to remember that especially for our communities care is a really ambiguous word and it's loaded with tension and it's loaded with tension because like you were mentioning 
conventional structures of care and state structures, I mean, I think that people in our community, they're allergic to them because to them care is means uh, top down control means victimization means infantilizing means debilitating so so i don't think that this necessarily means that we should abandon it and i think we what trampoline house does is to confront that through probably working with care as a way of working with a, a system that's already toxic maybe and trying to reverse that and in that sense what uh, muhannad was saying about capacity building uh, with the um, example of his workshop and sort of teaching people how to represent themselves is essential to what trampoline house does and the ways that we provide or try to provide that antidote so really care here becomes solidarity and it really becomes um about giving or offering people who have been victimized the capacity to give care themselves so perhaps like if somebody is a french teacher then they can put their capacities to good use or they teach um other languages or they do maintenance tasks but it's really about having a space that enables public access and care giving as a sort of kind of pre-establishment of a social contract a social democratic contract which is suspended in the case of asylum seekers for many many years um so there is a, a, a concern with care that i think f f from many different um, angles is kind of a, a constant in our work and the reason why we very easily can talk to each other even though our communities are really different yeah okay um let's go to mohanad and then um come back to sarah so, yeah, so, um, yeah, well, I, I mean, I, I want to talk about like, the, you know, the chain perception and the concept that you asked about, <clears throat> sorry, uh, but, uh, you know, building on what uh, Carlotta said, because Carlotta, um, uh, you know, explained everything uh, from a very general perspective and uh, in a pretty academic and, you know, uh, to an extent, uh, a theoretical sense. And I, I would like to comment uh, on it or explain it maybe a little bit in, in more of a practical uh, sense from, from our point of view as, as people who go through the process of the chain. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I guess the, the, the chain concept comes from the fact that, you know, we, we just keep circling in a, in a loop and everything just keeps repeating itself, you know, like if you, like also what Carlotta mentioned about what Morton said in terms of like sustaining people's bodies. Uh, but, but at the same time, the system strips people out from their humanities and, uh, and from, from, from their individuality. Uh, because when you are a rejected asylum seeker in Denmark, you just have no access or no right to, to basically anything. Uh, you can just sleep and, and eat and breathe and, and that, that's all of your rights. And one of the things that we wanted to present in, in our participation is to bring the Danish asylum model and show it in Germany and show the big contrast and the big, the big uh, difference in, in the perception of, of a person who is seeking asylum, regardless of if the government is conv convinced whether this person has a legal base for getting asylum or not, because in Germany, even if people are rejected, they still get access to education. They st still get access to language training. They still get access to job training. They can even have their own bank accounts and work while they don't have an, an, uh, you know, uh, a residence permit as, as a refugee. And, and, you know, that contrast is, is huge because basically like a lot of people who actually have a rejected asylum status in Germany, and I know that from experience from my peers and from my, the people who like, you know, travel from Northern Africa and the Western Asia to, to come to, to, to Europe and end up in different places in like, you know, some people actually manage to get the, the, the German passport, even though they have never got, gotten an accepted refugee application. And that is something that will never, ever happen in Denmark. And on another hand, even if you are accepted as a refugee in Denmark, you always have the risk of being deported 
you know we have we, we we have this case of you know syrian refugees for example right now having their residences provoked in denmark and you see people who had their residencies for five or six or seven years have lived in denmark for a while have learned the language have been working and then the government refuses to prolong their residencies which meant that they strip them out from all the, those like civil rights that they had and then they move to a refugee camp or a deportation camp and then after a while if their cases are 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 like you know handled and they get their they win their case and they get their residency prolonged then they come back to the point zero so those like seven or eight years that this person has lived in Denmark they just vanish and then this person has to start from the very beginning like if he or she just arrived uh, to, to this country so th this this notion of just like keep circling in this loop and never getting out of it because you are you just have this title of being a refugee uh, which which in 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 so many countries means that you know eventually you are going to become something else you are going to be a permanent resident or you are going to become a citizen after a while because you have been a part of the society and participating in it for a while in Denmark, the, the game is absolutely not, not like that at all. And it takes so much time and so much effort to just secure, you know, being there and sustaining yourself as, as a human being on, on a physical bodily needs. Not, and, and, you know, like for so many people, that's more than what they can expect to achieve in, in a lifetime in, in, in Denmark. And our goal, I think, from the, or one of the goals, I think, in, in, in bringing this chain concept is to just show the contrast between the, the, the German and the Danish asylum model and, and highlight that we are living in this situation right now. So for every other uh, European uh, Union citizens or, or organizations that are going to attend the meeting, to uh, the exhibition, to be aware of the situation in Denmark, and see what we are trying to change. Lastly, I just want to comment on what Carlotta also gave as an example of like, you know, someone who's being a, a French teacher uh, being used in, in his or her abilities to just reflect and participate somehow in our local community if they are not allowed to do it officially in, in, in Denmark. And that's one of the key elements that Trampoline House has been operating uh, with uh, be, because if the system dehumanizes the you know the asylum seeker and then trampoline house tries to offer an alternative where at least in this limited community in this limited place you have the ability to just be yourself as a human being in whatever you are into and whatever you have been practicing or you are capable of practicing uh, rather than just focusing on on the person's uh, political status or civil status okay thank you um sarah did you want to say anything or add anything to that? Yes, thank you. Very briefly, uh, I wanted to add that, yes, this chain is um, like to be stuck into a, a gray uh, area, so not to be detained and nor free. Uh, so without a perspective of a, of a future in Denmark, but basically also in Europe. So what does it mean is, creating a structurally violent exhaustion strategy that provokes uh, a lot of emotions and feelings. Uh, we uh, start the conversation with Project Artworks uh, uh, thinking about that. How to face uh, emotions like rage, like frustration, like exhaustion uh, inside very normative uh, system because uh, power structures uh, work on creating sad emotions, sad feelings. This is really uh, essential to the exercise of power and, and the rage is a consequence of that. And it is inside the chain every day. So this separates uh, from the capacity to act, basically. And this separate people among them. and separate them from having access to public and social life. And uh, this is linked to the condition of an oppression society. So what we are also trying to do is create positive emotions and affects and personal relationships. And 
uh, really to shape through that the space so that we have a access to a space that is it can be transformed it can be transformed by the actions that we are doing uh, Tone with Project Artwork, she was speaking about massaging the system that is not taking the system from a, a direct and uh, let's say direct perspective, but trying the creative uh, ways in which we can really, through our bodies, through our relationship, uh, have the possibility to act. I think this is really important inside uh, the chain uh, symbolic uh, structure as well. Thank you. Um, this seems a really good point to bring <coughs> project art work as well, because thinking about this, I guess what really comes out in terms of your work is pleasure. <laughs> and so linking to what Mohaned was also talking about early in terms of comedy, I think this, this is, there's a real subversive potential in bringing in pleasure and rest and restoration. Um, so project artworks, is, there is something um, I mentioned earlier when we were talking, that when you see the film, is the real sensuousness of the work and particularly the acoustic um, elements that you can hear now you know, if we listen sonic uh, hospitality as well to different forms of voice and mm -hmm. yeah kate i wonder um tim or mel if you wanted to say something that struck in the film about words literally slipping through the fingers you know so all the things that we can't represent and, and perhaps looking back to pleasure in your work and the importance of that um, I think, um, yeah, language and words are sort of redefined actually um, within the kind of studio in many ways because actually the art making becomes this shared language often between people. The work's made in lots of different ways. Some people make work in a very, very autonomous way and have a have this very incredible relationship with materials and and uh, other people uh, will make work in a very instinctive way and other people it's very collaborative and actually the, the, the use of materials and art making practice is actually this, this language is created between people which create these kind of relationships and yeah there's obviously a lot of um, fun in that exploration and of kind of um, redefining kind of the parameters of what a relationship can be and how how we communicate with each other and so yeah it's obviously really important in the films that actually people speak for themselves and and that they can represent themselves and i think that's a large part of all the work that we do so so much of the the work is a trace of this activity of this conversation um, might not even be um, um recognized by the maker as, as as something to keep it just is a trace of this engagement and so the film work we, we we tend to include a lot of film work around this this process because it reveals the kind of the art of this conversation which is what happens uh in, in the, the workshops all the time yeah and also it it creates a layer of insight for audiences if they um they have this thing on the wall that looks like a work of art and it may well be a work of art it depends how you feel about it um but it is this recognizable uh object and then there is a greater much uh, more sensitive and deeper insight into the origination of that object on the wall. And sometimes that can um, both uh, inspire audiences or it can actually disturb them, interestingly, um, because it, it plays with ideas of value, um, fundamental, cultural and human value. Um, it's one of the reasons why I think that's what Carl wants to say on that issue. Um, it's one of the reasons why it's so important to have um, people in 
uh, public exhibition spaces. So many of the artists who may have work on the wall uh, can also be present in an exhibition space, uh, be there in person in an area where that is familiar to them and um, is a studio area within a public exhibition so that they can um, be represented on their own terms and also be visible. Um, and this also causes uh, very often um, complex responses in people because there's still an idea that if someone doesn't use language to communicate, then they don't have agency. And I think that's true. It's not just a sort of Western concept. I think it's true all over the world. Um, that if people don't use the learnt modes of uh, social interaction and communication, then they are threatening to, um, you know, a sort of civic understanding of what it is to be human and to be able to contribute. So, yeah, I don't know if you... <laughs> yeah. Mel, I was just thinking about that. Mel, I was just thinking about that issue, issue of pleasure and joy, and you know, thinking about how um, Kate and Tim have been talking about this sort of this moving outward from the individual into families and communities. Um, did you have any experience of that? Did you have any experience? Um, oh, um, I do. It's just the way that we, we all sort of work together, don't we? It sort yes, of starts with Carl, but our relationship with Yeah, really it's, it's really, uh, it is really like interpersonal. It's, and it's been, I feel, a, a, a great attribute to Carl's understanding as, uh, as well. Like uh, when, when he's not in the studio, He's recognised the studio as a really safe environment. He wasn't very trusting when he first came here. He was very unsure. And now we could tell him Project Artworks and be on the beach and he'd be like, great. He was like, he's happy to go along with it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's great that we've been, it, we're, all, we're all part of this community and it definitely works. It, it's, it's a part of our family as well. It, it, it truly is. So, and extending this program into with other families who are in situations like ours and situations which are more difficult it, i think it's it, it it's it's a massive help and i feel that this is something that uh, it should be more widely known <laughs> there should be more more of more project artworks to help because i think as well this is carla but i think for families who are just uh, who have recently, like, they've got young ones that have been diagnosed with mm. complex needs. It's having something like Project Artworks integrating and sort of and, uh, explaining the freedoms that you can get from being here. I just think is a massive benefit to the individual as for in going into adult life. So it's the same sort of, I guess. I feel like it's a luxury <laughs> because Carl's not had the same sort of. Uh, young adult experiences that me or my sister have, have had. We've had to, he's kind of had that later in life. So, just, just, just thinking more about the joy of uh, the, the, the practice, which is it's very much about the sort of anarchic nature of, of what we do and, and kind of this idea of the work that Kate was talking about in the gallery is kind of questioning who uses a gallery and what's it for. and and can we bring that conversation and be together, stand next to each other and sort of have that conversation and people represent themselves within that space. And, and also like personally, the joy of watching someone oh, make work free from the sort of self-conscious restraint that we normally uh, associate with kind of art making is, is just always so joy joyful to watch yeah. and to be part of and to experience. And, 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 and it, it so often kind of holds a sort of mirror up to the absurdity of like my life and the social constructs <laughs> that I sort of mm. live with it. 
sort of break free from that thinking it's just it's so liberating and i think that that's 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 the kind of the quality of 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 the sort of contribution actually from everyone from Mel and all her family are as much and as important and as integral to Project Artworks. We can't operate without the contributions of everyone here in this space. We kind of have like that mirror to joy, like our joy is it's it's great to see Carl mm. being sort of so is socially acceptable within a community that doesn't necessarily need us to lead him. He's happy, like it's an environment where he's happy to do that. So I think it's sort of just like the flip side. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, and I guess the the um, the link between us and Trampoline House is that what we try and do, another aspect of the work is that we try and be, to work holistically with uh, people to collaborate and to um, help them and support them to navigate complex systems um, that are often state generated for uh, enabling them to live and to get the right kind of support because if we don't do that we can sometimes lose people from the studio they disappear into very restrictive uh, environments where they're sort of separated from their community. So it's really important to work deeply with the systems. And one of the things we'll be doing in Documenta is to bring, um, first of all, to we're creating, at the moment we're um, working to create relationships with people who are living in care settings in and around Kassel in Germany, trying to understand the German system of social care and um, building, uh, we want to build drawings uh, at a large scale throughout our time in Documenta to understand how people live so that we will, we, I, I don't know, we don't know, for example, what the Indonesian system is. Is it just that communities support people who have disabilities to live fully? Um, or are there state systems that they can access? Um, what is it like in Bangladesh? How, what is the link between an individual and the freedom to access uh, a full life? What, what are the networks of support that they can access to enable them to do that? This is a sort of period, this is a research process um that i'm not sure i i don't know what those systems are like and you know we're really really interested because people need to understand that um that in order to live some people need help they need deep moment my moment 24 hour support to live to stay alive and um what is that like across the world okay thank you let's let's sort of bring this into conversation more now trampoline house um morton you've got your hand up did you want to respond to that Thank you uh, for the floor. Uh, I just wanted to uh, um, talk a little about, um, because I think there are uh, similarities in a way we, uh, like our methods seem to be uh, somewhat the same in terms of uh, trying to achieve uh, a level of equality. Uh, however, I think it's, uh, for us, it's really important to, um, to stress that, um, people who live in the camps, uh, they are usually being treated by the system. I mean, they're being provided for with uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, uh, anything a body needs. But usually after six months, uh, a lot of the uh, people who live in the camps start go uh, sick. They become sick, for, uh, like illness of being, uh, you know, uh, being isolated. And uh, so they, 
most of them they have uh, levels of depression. Uh, then uh, the uh, the response from uh, the this healthcare system in the camps is to start medicating people, um, and we think that's uh, like an utterly wrong approach because actually, what happens in the camps is that uh, people react in a healthy way to a, a sick system. Uh, so. Uh, our response to that in Trampton House is to try to create the antidote to uh, this system that makes people uh, ill, and that is to uh, provide um, uh, an inclusive environment uh, where uh, we uh, we also try to unlearn our own um, kind of uh, victimization of the other. Uh, that's actually it's actually hard. Because if people have been victimized um, over and over and ha have started to, you know, they have learned that this is how it is and uh, you do become victimized. And then, um, you, so, so to get at, at, a, at a level of equality, is actually, it takes skill from both parts, from both parties, because uh, the uh, structural racism and, and uh, you know, our uh, volunteers' desire to help somebody can often be... Uh, sort of uh, a problem in itself <laughs> because uh, it's really about uh, how to allow people to help themselves um, yeah I don't know do you want to add something I, I wanted I wanted to actually talk about the uh, joy and pleasure uh, concept that uh, Yasmin brought up drawing from the comedy thing and then uh, uh, I think when uh, the art project we're talking about it, like Mel mentioned something about it being a luxury. And uh, since like we're just doing this parallel uh, conversation, I just want to say that in, I think in our perception of, of how we lean towards comedy in the, in, as, as one of our practices in the installation, uh, we, we cannot afford that luxury. And I think that that's one of the differences because for us, we chose comedy because it's one of those escape gates that you can just uh, have uh, the, where, where you have the position to just say things that might sound hurtful or might sound too serious or like, you know, too much if you say it in a serious manner uh, or in, in a serious like, setting. But when you say it in, in, a, in a comics scenario, uh, then it can be, there is this unspoken agreement that you can say those things and they will be taken as a joke, but they will at the same time resonate afterwards for people to just rethink uh, the situation and rethink the system. Uh, so, so it's just, you know, having this position of, of saying whatever you want to say, even if it sounds too brutal sometimes, but since it's it, it, everybody knows it's comedy, then like, you know, it's okay to take it a little bit too far as 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 a sorry we seem to have lost sound um maybe while um morton at mohammed Mohanad sort out their sound. Um, Carl, we've only got 10 minutes left, can you believe? So uh, Carlotta and Sarah, did you want to come in on any response to what Project Artworks um, were talking about? Yeah. Carlotta. No, Sarah wanted to speak first. Okay, I think it's great. Go on. Yeah. It's fine. Okay, I can go briefly. Yeah, uh, regarding also um, the spaces that we are creating, and it's very nice to see project artworks in their own space today. To, to experience that is really important because these spaces are shaped, as I was saying before, in um, as safe spaces. And it's not a common word to use. It's I don't use this word quite often because it's really hard to to build up a safe space. So one of the first times that I that I came to Trampoline House, I feel hosted 
there was the right to host from the users of the house. This is totally a different uh, a reversal of the um, stereotypical victim status. And to host is a, is a, is a right. And um, to be hosted as well is a right. And it was totally different the position in which I found myself inside Champlain House for the very first time, because everyone it was there for a certain purpose. Everyone that was there was offering time, engagement, skills to the community, their own presence. And uh, this safe space that is still very fragile because that this should be renegotiated again and again because it is within a perpetual violent system uh, always in place in our western societies that are so racist so oppressive so white and patriarchal is the space for me this is really the space for us as well so it, another important question where is the art uh Champlain House defines itself as a refugee justice community center and justice and community are the two pillars of art uh, for uh, for uh, what is really living that space and uh, because it doesn't exist in our society so this is art Thank yeah you. I, I really want yeah, just really add on that. That's be a beautiful um, thing to to have reflected on, Sarah. And I think it's exactly this. It's the fact that we have a unique support structure that wouldn't otherwise exist um, that really makes the art. And I think that is something that I can also see um, at work in the practice of project artworks. So the idea of having an environment that in it, that's over and over over time becomes a structure so it becomes a model perhaps of doing things differently um so the kind of key point here is that through our everyday practices um we create a culture in a way of implementation so rather than art being this big event that happens once um we really strive to to make changes kind of at the base of um, our communities. And I guess that's a good way to break into perhaps how that may or may not clash with the Documenta 15 structure and what kind of challenges. So we've been talking a little bit about that, but I think it's important to, to reflect on, on those as well. We're coming up to the last five minutes of the conversation and I wondered if we could end with I, I asked you this when we had our sort of pre pre discussion, but say something about the things that you're still tussling with so that you're not sure about in terms of your work and these con different contributions to social justice. So if it, there was one thing that you wanted to highlight, what might that be is a, a question a provocation um, for the work that you're doing with Documenta 15. And let's start with um, project artworks. I think that we always, we're always walking along an ethical tightrope of um, around assent, dissent, and consent in. Um, facilitating exposure and visibility for people who may not be able to knowingly consent uh, simply because we're working within a neurotypical construct of uh, rights and ethics so that is always really difficult uh, territory in enabling people to be visible. I mean, it would be really nice, for example, for Carl, for you just to see what Carl has done before we, we finish. Um, that if would be lovely. Time. Yeah, so maybe Kate, you can um, get up and move the camera while we hear from Trampoline House. So Trampoline House, um, I don't know more, 
Morton, if your your audio is back on. But so the question was just to highlight one thing. So the thing that you're still tussling with, you're not sure about in terms of the work that you're doing with Mentor 15 that we can send out as a as a call awaiting responses. <laughs> Or somebody else from Trampoline House? <laughs> Can you speak, Ross? No. no, there's sound. There's, we're still so uh, maybe Carlos, just because we're running out of time, we've got two minutes. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, I think what's interesting mm -hmm. is that all the um, keywords of talking about deepness um, we have some practices that and also like the purpose of these practices so i guess one thing to um think about is how are we going to make sure that whatever benefit occurs in Documenta 15, which I'm sure um, will be um, very relevant in terms of representation, of telling um, uh, audiences about the conditions of the Danish asylum system. How do we bring back to the community, also in material terms? So I'm really thinking about the sustainability um, question. And perhaps, perhaps this has something, um, it has less to do with us and it has more to do with kind of the crossroads at which the art world is currently in. So there is a, there is a tension. Yes, Sarah. Sarah, yeah, we've got one minute, Sarah. So. But just, but it's very important to mention that now we are facing the uh, Ukrainian uh, crisis. And this is a, a big wave of new refugees that are treated in a, under a condition of privilege, uh, despite the uh, refugees and asylum seekers that are not coming from Europe. So what we are really has mean what we cannot establish, what we cannot really um, be sure about uh, is the community with which we are working now. So this is why we are also changing our programs because, you know, uh, our proposal is based, on, is based on workshop, on school, on education, on having uh, participated moments and the community uh, of refugees and asylum seekers is changing a lot all over uh, now. So we are really facing this at the very moment. And this is also the nature of Champlain House that uh, is constantly changing depending on the urgencies that we are facing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, thank you. Um, so this is the end of the conversation. I wonder if we can just go back to end with what Carl has produced during this conversation, which is obviously another part of the dialogue. So I want to thank all the participants and especially wanted to say um, a big thank you to uh, Udina, who's been our signer. Let me just see if I've got this right. So yes, who's the sign interpreter and also to Matthias Janssen, who's been the simultaneous translator into German. This video is going to be available very soon, both in English and in German. And the next episode in the series of these conversations will be on Sunday, the 8th of May. And you can find out more about that on the Documenta 15's website and social media channels. So a huge thank you to everybody. And um, I wish you safe and well, and a big thank you from the panel as well. So take care. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you. Bye. Dum da da ding dang da 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 dum dum da da ding dang 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 da 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 dum dang da 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 dum da 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 dum da 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 dum.